Alright, welcome back to Rogue Tech, and welcome back to your first playthrough. So, start off with a little bit of bookkeeping. I'm going to start taking Saturdays and Sundays uh, to just not upload. <laughs> just kind of reducing the workload a little bit for myself as I try to do too many ambitious things all at once. But uh, the current plan is to continue your first playthrough Monday through Friday for likely one more week, possibly two, as I get started recording Challenge Run Mark 3. Uh, I'll determine exactly how the breakup of days will happen then, but uh, yeah, it's it's in the works. So here's hoping that I am less of a goldfish moving forward so that Challenge Run Mark 3 doesn't last like one recording session. Now then, in the mech bay, we currently have the stealth our new Incubus, Bushwhacker, and Locust ready to drop. And honestly, the Incubus being a 30-tonner, I don't think I'm going to cannibalize it. Although, I do definitely want to move the machine gun ammo out of center torso. That's a very dangerous place to have ammo. That said, actually... No, I should definitely put the AP Ghost Rifles on on the on the Omni Mech we have building. Definitely. How many hard points does it actually wait 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 how The Firestarter Omni in three days is only gonna have one location repaired, so maybe we do run the AP Ghost Rifles on the Incubus. We could drop the large pulse laser, which will actually help our heat efficiency a lot. Because right now we have a heat delta of 29, so this thing is not ready to drop as is. Plus, if we drop the large pulse laser and don't replace it, we could also punch with this thing. Because it does have lower arms and hands, which will make it more effective at punching than an Omni mech that doesn't have the Omni lower hands. And punching, then following up with AP Gauss Rifles, is a very interesting prospect. So let's just quickly uh, drop that max armor. Okay. <laughs> what do we What do we look like with maxed out armor? Um, assuming we keep the machine guns, which we're, again, probably not. We're probably going to replace with AP Gauss Rifles. But that leaves us with five tons left. Two support hard points and an energy hard point. I would absolutely love to put in the support hard points a couple AMSs. Actually, we have seven AP Gauss rifles. Hmm. We have seven AP Gauss rifles in what, one bin of ammo? So, firing them six times, right? Six times seven. That'd be 42. Okay, so no, we can fire seven times. So we have enough ammo to alpha strike seven times with all seven... <laughs> with all seven AP Gauss rifles. That's not enough ammo to run them all, but at the same time, that is a very, very impressive alpha strike. With each one of them doing 18 damage, three projectiles each, massive crit chance. Yeah, no, we're definitely going to keep the AP Gauss rifles for our Omni mech. That's the only way we're going to be able to run all seven, and hopefully we can get another bin of ammo by then. Actually, before I forget, before I forget, let me just go check out the store. So, in the store, <laughs> we have some battle armor equipment, we have, uh, yeah, no mag shot ammo. Hmm. There's an LRM-10. It's interesting. But LRM-5, okay, so... The breakdown with Inner Sphere LRMs is the Inner Sphere LRM 5 is 2 tons. 
So if you have the hard points for it, LRM5s are always more efficient damage per tonnage than LRM10s. Likewise, LRM15s, which are 7 tons, are more efficient than LRM20s. And also actually more efficient than LRM10s, but the most efficient LRMs for inner sphere LRMs is the LRM5 systems, assuming you have the hard points to run them. So I'm not super interested in LRM10, and there's not really much else worth looking at. Plus, we do need to keep our eye on our money now, since we spent a million sea bills on this Incubus, but it was absolutely well worth it. So. Actually, some electronic warfare wouldn't be a terrible idea for the five tons. Beagle probe, sensors recon, but we don't have a guarding ECM or anything like that. Hmm. I'm going to leave it for now. I'm not going to drop it yet. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as is. That clan large pulse laser is actually very interesting. So the Bushwhacker is running an ER large laser, which is only one ton less. But it's much less accurate. It also generates only two less heat. So we would be trading... Actually, we would be trading one ton for more damage. Less range though, right? ER large is 840. Clan large is... Nope, same range. Okay. So yeah, it would be, it would be an upgrade trading one ton for accuracy. But we're already very tight on tonnage using the Bushwhacker. So I definitely think we're going to leave it as is for now at least. Yeah. So the Incubus for now we will just kind of have set aside. The Assassin also for now we need to do work on. Um, but yeah. So we've got the Bushwhacker, Stealth, Phoenix Hawk, and Locust that are ready to drop once they're all repaired. Or, you know, once they're not being worked on. Oh, we're actually building another Incubus. Do I just stop the work on that Incubus and scrap it since I already have one? So how much time is this actually taking? 14 days. And it's not an Omni. It's not going to be ready to drop once we finish, like, the fire starter, once we finish fully repairing it, we'll be able to slap weapons on very quickly and start dropping it. The Irby Lamb is a lamb, so I'm definitely going to keep that around, but I think... How many sea bills do we save here? 353,000. Okay. So the Incubus is going to stay the lowest priority... And if we need sea bills, that is a third of a million sea bills that we can just immediately pull back out as needed. So that's fine. Uh, Firestarter definitely takes precedent over the urban mech because we don't quite have all the lamb goodies that we want to put in it. But yeah, we got three mechs, we got three vehicles. So let's go drop, right? Barracks. Yep, we're solid. We are absolutely solid. Scion, again, as I've mentioned previously, we have no reason to not upgrade Scion every single time something's available. Just because, um, yeah, it's our commander. We don't pay anything extra. So... I am a huge fan of Cautious. So we're going to do that. Uh, it does give us extra initiative and advanced sensors. So we're less likely to have the no sensors debuff. And if we reserve, we drop a stability. Uh, we drop... So I believe it's one bar of stability damage per, like, phase or uh, per initiative that you're dropping. So, yeah, it's uh, it's nice. <laughs> you can you can drop all of, your, um, all of your stability damage very quickly 
with the cautious perk. Do I actually upgrade everyone else too? I mean, we're six days before the financial report. So the question is, does the increase in salary offset enough repair cost? Because it's not going to update their salary until we actually commit to it. So... Alright, so... Rasalka is definitely one of the people we're using constantly because of the Mockingbird. So I think let's give her tactics. It gives her bonus initiative. It gives her um, reduced hesitation. And yeah, not having no sensors debuff would be really cool on the Mockingbird since it's a very accurate and you know pinpoint weapon system uh, carrier. So we're going from 47, 518 to 49,678. I should have paid attention to see if the extravagant was... Oh no, it is showing it. Salary extravagant. So, it's only like 2,000 C bills, so great a point. Alright. In that case, we might as well. Um, Holdra, I'm actually going to wait for the tactics. I think. And then... Horik, we're also dropping in vehicles... So, let's give him one gunnery. Then again, I think we're going to give him piloting. Because that does increase his uh, movement. And that is helpful on the copperhead. Since we don't actually really care about the weapons hitting. They're not very impactful. So, yeah. And then Braver. He's largely on the Locust. And the Locust doesn't really care about melee. So, yeah, there we go. We've got our people leveled up a little bit. Let's go ahead and drop. I mean... We do have the stealth now. So, our combat effectiveness is considerably higher than it was. But I'm not confident in a two-skull mission quite yet. I mean, it's definitely doable. It's not a matter of can we succeed. It's a matter of at what cost. So let's do the escort. See how much damage we take. And then maybe drop on a blackout after. And yeah, once again... Well, then again, we're not, we're not as well off on the financial report as we were. So I think I am gonna take one of the one of the uh, advances of C bills. If we manage to escort the entire convoy and they all evac, then we get bonus percentage payout. So that could. I and mean, we're against planetary government, so once again with planetary government, it's complete RNG, whether you're against really, really good, valuable stuff or absolute trash. So I think the extra six parts, like the extra six salvage total, one of which is a priority pick, is... I, I think the... what is that? 250,000? Something like that. Yeah, I think it's like 250,000. I, I think... I think going for the extra payout is valuable. So, let's do it. Okay. Mockingbird. Chaucer. Copperhead. Locust. We're gonna put Braver back on it. Because I do very much enjoy the uh, not having recoil on the machine guns. Actually, we can just leave the Bushwhacker there, and we can drop in the Stealth. And with Sarge? No, wait. Hellion was the Stealth, okay. I mean... Yeah, Sarge has four piloting, so same melee as Narf. 
but the Disgraced will likely help a bit. Just, if nothing else, to keep it safe. And, um, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> let's do that. Sure, why not? All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Should be a fairly straightforward escort mission. Yet again, the same map. Beautiful. And once again, we're going to be escorting the same spot. And since we're escorting to the same spot... <clears throat> excuse me. Since we're escorting to the same spot from the same base, I think we're going to drop in the exact same way we do before. That would... Yeah, same... We're going to drop in the exact same way we did before. Just everyone... Kind of just in order of movement or whatever. Is there a blocking force? That's the first question. That's always the first question. Okay, so sprint for five in cover or move for four cover and braced. Moving That's out. a no-brainer. Not that it matters because there appears to be no guarding force. Six cover and braced is also quite nice. Moving to position. All right. Braver. Don't really care about damage reduction there. We just want pure evasion. But again, there's there's no blocking force. So at this point, we're just kind of going. Position confirmed. Okay, let's go. Very curious what the local government's going to bring. All right. Don't need to sure. Tell me twice. The stealth is a great candidate for activating the point, since it is a melee mech. On it. And so we kind of want it to be up in the front. Oh yeah, I forgot it was stealth too. Oh man, I'm gonna have fun. Uh, I'm gonna have fun with this, seeing uh, seeing exactly what our new stealth can do. I am gonna wait a turn to activate the point though. Try to get in a uh, better position. Move into position. Copperhead. We're going to need line of sight to be able to drop the mines. And yeah, um, I did get a comment, I believe from one of the modders, that mentioned that there have been some changes uh, specifically to the AI. So they now actually move mindfully of the minefields. Copy. So, yeah. They, they will not just mindlessly run around inside of a minefield until they all explode from it. Uh, I mean, yeah, sure. On my way. Why not? And then Confirmed. put stealth in the front. Put the locust on high ground. Heading out. Copperhead. Also front. Right, Commander. Chosur. Chosur actually... Let's get that AC-10 on the high ground. Maybe get a little bit better accuracy out of it. And then 13 evasion on the Mockingbird. Love it. Yeah, Rusalka's just going to stay a VTOL pilot, I think. Alright. We have the convoy. I saw enemy in water. But... There we go. Ooh, a quick cell vindicator with double Thunderbolt tins, a bolt on Thunderbolt two pack, and a firebomb times six. Oh boy. Irby, three energy and a tag, it looks like. Locust, machine gun, machine gun, medium laser, and a panther, classic panther with a PPC on one arm and an SRM4 in, I believe, the left torso. Okay. Need something, Chief? So we're going to want to keep our distance from the Panther, absolutely. I don't think the Vindicator will keep all six evasion once he moves. At the same time, I would like to destroy him if possible before he shoots all his Thunderbolts, but there's no way. Only the Locust acts before he does. So I'm actually going to reserve and let him take a turn. 
And hopefully it goes, you know, fine. Now he can fire indirectly at literally anyone. So... Okay. He missed. I don't know why he only shot one Thunderbolt. But it's it's fine. That's fine. Hey. Also, he has hybrid TSM. The the quick cell hybrid TSM that gives additional movement and uh, additional melee damage. That could be very interesting on the Incubus, but we already have one sitting around. I mean that that is a heck of a backstrike. That said, he's already heavily damaged on the right side. So, yeah, let's, uh, 72.5, yeah. So, yeah, let's do that. Affirmative. I don't think, I don't think it's worth using the bomb clusters yet. This might hurt. I don't, I don't think it's the play to use the bomb clusters quite yet. Ooh, PPC. Stray shot. Ow. Damage minimal. Yeah, PPCs are a pretty significant pinpoint, but luckily, we got some, we got some solid tanks. We got a SRM-2, LRM-10, double medium laser prowler that has 605 armor. Well, 556 now that it took a hit. Chopper all. 460 armor, but it has an arrow 4. Light AC5's medium... Okay. These convoys did not need... They did not need our help. At all. I hear ya. It's kind of ridiculous, honestly. I mean, isn't this just one and a half skulls? Okay. Pretty respectable hit chance on the Irby. And the, we now know the Irby does have a PPC, so... Kill the slow mover before we worry about the, uh... The panther on the high ground. Yeah, no, let's... Let's, Got it. let's make some distance. Sprint in. Try to get the best shot possible. Got it. Okay. Yep. That's fine. Oh, also, did I did I mention that somebody clarified uh, or pointed out something? I it did not occur to me whenever I was talking about the B pod back when we put it into the stealth. So the B pod it has minus one hundred accuracy against anything other than uh, power armor and protomex. Since it's an AOE, I was like, yeah, that's not a problem. Except it's also a streak launcher. So the only time with minus 100 accuracy against anything else and plus 100 ac accuracy against power armor and protomex, the only time it's ever going to fire as a streak launcher is if it gets a hit. So it basically does nothing until and unless we get battle armor or uh, protomex on the board. And since it has a max range of 60 meters, that means we have to get inside of swarm range to ever actually use it. So, I kind of don't want to. Acknowledge. I would kind of prefer to not actually use it on a mech that I actually care about. Although, having it on a melee mech is definitely preferable to having it on any other kind of mech. But I still don't want to get swarmed by battle armor, so... I'm taking the shot. That's fine. How's it going? Um, but I definitely want to save the locust. Wait, did Braver get no Goodbye. sensors? Plus one, but that's not enough to even see the armor counts. Hmm. Yeah. I'm not gonna what get the, the hesitation then. It's not. It's not worth the hesitation since he did not get a great sensor roll. So yeah. Just dropping in, <laughs> focusing the Vindicator, and there's actually a chance 
there's a chance that we actually possibly open that. him. Nope. We basically needed both lasers to hit the same location to open him up. Yeah, this is this is a nice one. The light AC t or not light AC tins, the light AC fives. Oh wow, and armor piercing ammo. Armor piercing ammo. 11 damage dealt directly to internals, always rolls for a crit. Minus 30% damage dealt with the ammo, that's fine. 100% bonus crit chance. And then minus 1 accuracy. That's fine. Do we have any other ammo? Nope, just armor piercing. So I'm actually kind of interested in firing on the panther with it. Especially with that hit chance, yes. So... The idea here is the Panther has ammo, unlike the Urban Mech. Which means if we get a through armor crit on the ammo, it explodes. Also, if we get a through armor crit on the PPC, there goes the majority of its weapon systems. So, just generally, good times. Alright, chopper all. Move into cover. Now, this is a good point to talk about arrows. So, arrows. Also, um, this also applies to, like, artillery stuff. But uh, you have different types of ammo, and different types of ammo do different things. So, the standard ammo is just a giant AoE boom. The guided ammo has bonus accuracy, and also uh, is pinpoint instead of area of effect. Used to be pinpoint instead of area of effect. Looks like it's now also area of effect or something. However, it has firing modes. So, artillery mode. You lob it up in the air, it comes down. It's less likely to directly hit than the other firing modes, but it's more likely, especially with like standard ammo or inferno ammo or something like that, it's more likely to hit close enough to still do work. Direct is you have line of sight, you fire directly at the mech. Um, I believe direct... Mm, minus four accuracy. But I believe it also ignores evasion. Which is why the panther... Eh, does it ignore evasion? The only two targets to choose from is the Irby and... Yeah. In any case, <laughs> if if you fire directly with an arrow or with an artillery system, if you miss, it usually flies super wide. Also, you can stray shot with a direct arrow or with a direct artillery shot. And then there's flak. Flak is basically just shoot at flyers. Um, you cannot fire artillery or direct, I believe, either at... Um, a flying target. I, I believe you have to use flak for arrows and artillery pieces to fire at a flying target. But yeah, um, that's that. I believe it also ignores, I believe flak also ignores all evasion or something like that. But yeah, we're going to use artillery. Even though it's less of a hit chance, I'd rather do some damage than, you know, nothing. And we do have the option of firing indirectly at the Vindicator, which I already specified is my primary first target. And since we can't actually shoot anything else at any of the other targets, I think we're going to. Oh, tub thumping. Yes, okay. We'll, we'll get to what happened with the shot there. But tub thumping, as you saw pop up over the vehicle, is... Or this vehicle. Um, that little pop-up, that floaty, is letting you know that you fired without bracing the turn before. Which doesn't matter for vehicles. Vehicles that have artillery and aero systems and things like that don't care. They can just move and shoot and move and shoot. But a mech, if a mech is tub thumping, there's a chance, a piloting roll, to see if they get knocked down because the artillery just has that much of a kick. So the way you prevent tub thumping is move and brace the turn before, then shoot the next turn. I hear ya. And that's how you use artillery and arrows and things on mechs without getting knocked down perpetually. 
And uh, yeah, the AoE did not directly hit, but it did hit, and best, <laughs> best thing that could possibly have happened, it hit to the right of the Vindicator. So the splash damage basically all got dealt to the right side of the Vindicator, and anytime you're shooting with artillery or arrows or anything like that, any of the big splashy stuff, you basically are doing stability damage before they have, you know, without them having any actual, like, chance to not get knocked unsteady. Like, you're, even if you don't directly hit, as we just, you know, we, we missed the artillery shot, but it still landed close enough to destabilize the Vindicator, so. Now we get a follow-up with everyone else, which is fun. Uh, 54, 28.7, 54, 28.7, yeah, 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 that's fine. Or alternatively, so Inferno is actually really interesting on the Panther to prevent it from firing its PPC. Yeah, I think let's do that. See if we can get some heat on the Panther, because the Panther CA, I do not believe, has anything special. I believe it's just single heat sink cooling. Which means we're going to have a fairly easy time you betcha. heating him up. So, plus 16 heat. Assuming I'm correct and that it is single heat sinks, that's half of his allotted heat for the next round. So, good times. We're actually going to move and shoot for absolute highest hit chance possible here. Shooting him from the already damaged side with an AC-10. Structure exposed. Speedy leg actuator destroyed. Okay. I'll take it. And I can only shoot him from the front with this vehicle, so... I think we're going to go for evasion. Try to get closer so we can bring all of our weapons to bear. But, continuing to fire, for the aforementioned reasons, the armor-piercing ammo against the Panther is just the best target for it. Then we have the Prowler that's just got missiles. And only the LRM can fire? Yeah? Yeah? What if we, uh, distance from convoy route? Unfortunate. I was hoping we could get close enough to actually shoot more. But, yeah. I think we're going to take the one spot where we can shoot with direct line of sight. Just because indirect fire is, I believe, a penalty of two to hit. But, yeah. If we could take the right arm of the Irby, that should be the PPC down. So, that's the goal. What do you need? Stealth. Stealth is unable to get in melee range, but... We are able to get up close and personal. And there is always a chance that the 0.9% hit, hits. It's a low chance, but it's only going to fire if it hits. So, yeah, let's do that. Didn't need it. And that's a bunch of Thunderbolts off the board, which is very nice. Very, very nice to have those Thunderbolt 10s off the board. Alright, still shooting at the convoy. Love it. As long as they shoot the convoy, we get out of here with no repair bills and no repair time. And I think I am going to completely focus the Irby over here. I'm going to stay out of the mineral field to have the highest hit chance possible while sprinting close. Oh, yeah. So, Irby, there's a chance we open his arm or his side torso. So, going all in with the machine guns. And I think I'll save the mind dispenser for the next wave. Oh, right. The Copperhead has Inferno. I forgot about that. So, eh, using on the Irby was less than ideal. Because, yeah. <laughs> He's in the water. Uh, in case you didn't know, standing in the water makes your heat sinks more effective. So it's going to be much, much harder to pull off any kind of uh, heat shenanigans on him. I mean, maybe we just move and shoot. You betcha. Maybe we just move and shoot. And yeah. Uh -huh. 
I really should change the weapon orders to the laser fires first. I don't think the missiles are ever going to reach the target before the LBX does, but I'm pretty sure the laser firing first and the LBX firing last lets the laser pretty much guaranteed hit first. And... Mm, do I go for the sprint or do I go for the move for highest hit chance? Sprint. Sprint actually gives us higher hit chance. Cool. Sure. Why not? Let's let's do that. Somebody has to shoot the locust eventually, and it's always gonna have aid evasion. So again, just trying to avoid hesitation for the most part. Okay. No stray shots, and it looks like he has a PPC and two small pulse lasers. Pretty sure that's what I just saw. In any case. Art in a mechanized ICV. Once again, there's a chance for a through armor kill here, so. He's unsettled, so there's that. Anytime you're doing structure damage to an enemy, then uh, yeah, you're very You are you're very likely to successfully be panicking them a little bit. I'm actually gonna shoot straight through the locust just in case stray shot. Okay. Waiting Structure forward. exposed. Stressed. 61.8. That is very hard to pass up. Location confirmed. We are slightly firing past our Locust, but hopefully it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so I was correct. Next Single heat down. sinks, but now his PPC is down, so all he has is an SRM-4. And not much to speak about. As far as uh, as far as his remaining armaments go, his armor is down to nothing on center, which means we should be able to finish him off with the stealth fairly easily. And then, if we can get this kill on the locust, not your lucky day, is it? Nope. But he is unsettled. Yeah. Um. I think we're gonna just focus the Irby. That, that was a mistake. I didn't pay attention. I, I saw the red. I didn't pay attention to the whole line. So, we would be doing reduced damage if we do this. And that was my graphics card chugging a little bit. It, uh, it's a problem. I'm still troubleshooting. Tag destroyed. That's unfortunate. I would have loved to have gotten a tag. Especially since the... Uh, Especially since the Incubus we just got has the two support hardpoints. A tag and AMS or tag and narc either way would be really nice to have. Um, and I think we're going to just fire on the Irby indirectly. Why not? There's a chance we get some serious work done. Off it goes. Huge miss, still did like 12 damage, 14 damage, something like that. But it went super wide. Um, also, with the arrow and artillery systems, the further you move, I believe, uh, the larger the variance. So if you stand and shoot, you have a much tighter cluster of where the deviation can bring the projectile. Whereas if you sprint, you have a reduced, or, or you have a larger area that the projectile could fall in. And if you actually, you know, um, if you jump and shoot, you have an insanely wide area of where it could possibly go. So it's generally a bad idea to uh, put jump jets on any kind of artillery mech. You know what? I don't even care. I'm, I'm just going to drive through the fire. This should be a kill, either way. And I just don't want to accidentally stray shot my own units. Cool. So there's two units down. Like I said, I don't think this convoy actually needed our help at all. <laughs> like, arrow, four light AC5s with through armor damage. What can I do for you? Yeah. Yeah. 
it. Yeah, they would have been fine. But it's, it's you know, it's great. That just means it's easy payout. Uh, Beagle probe crit. Oh, so he's got some yeah. electronic warfare right, in there too. What can I do for you? Nice. Nice. Um, left torso is about to pop. Right side has the PPC. But I can't get a left flank, so yeah, let's just get the right flank then. And yeah. Got it. Easy. There goes the. Oh, it was a snub nosed PPC. I would have loved to have had that. And we destroyed the Guardian ECM. It's fine. We're just, you know, ruining all the salvage. It's, it's, it's completely fine. Nothing to see here. Copy that. Okay. And yeah. Fire. Miss. No, he punched out. Now I really regret hitting him from the right side. Because that would have been a snub those PPC and Garden ECM ready to take. And hey, let's uh, let's do that whole melee thing. That that is a thing that we have been built for. Roger. So miss, unfortunate. But we still keep our evasion, and we still shoot everything into his back. Yep. Got the club. No. That'll do. And I think I'm going to position right on top you of so. the stealth because I believe that means I can't accidentally shoot it. I don't think you can stray shot if okay. you're in... Like, if you're in the same hex firing outside of that hex, I don't think you can stray shot stuff that's sharing the hex with you. Receiving you. Now, if you're shooting at somebody who's sharing a hex, like battle armor that's gotten knocked off of somebody, then you can stray shot the other unit in the hex you're shooting at. But, yeah. So... Let's see. Yeah, this is our locust, so sprint. Sprint high ground? Yeah, sprint high ground. A little bit of heat, it's fine. Running through fire is not that big of a deal for a mech unless you're, you know, running hot. And then the shop roll definitely want to protect this thing because uh, is it's nice to be able to fire off arrows at people makes things very easy uh, yep yeah, go around the fire please beautiful nice nice and last convoy unit sure also in the mineral field sounds good and that is the next round, right? Pretty sure. Yeah. Waiting on you, Commander. Um, I'm actually gonna take a minute to get all of my mechs up here. Got it. Just the the good old fashioned uh, good old fashioned stall for a minute, unjam weapons. Just generally try to get into good positions. Uh -huh. Good Prepare for the incoming Moving reinforcements. Uh, in any case, yeah, that's been your episode of Rogue Tech for the day. I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, have a good one.